Now we're going to implement the same feature, but now with following test-driven development. All right, here we are again, the same example. We're going to implement the same to do here to publish a podcast, but now we want to follow TDD. So this means we need or have to create a test before we implement anything else. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is create now a new feature test. And feature test because I'm going to hit an endpoint so this won't be a unit test. Now in here we're also going to refresh the database so this means we are always using an in-memory database which gets refreshed with every test. Okay, how do we start from here? Now we are focused to think about what do we want to test, what can we test and what is the outcome. And if we go back to our to-do list, there are two main things that we want to test. We don't need to test that we have an endpoint or something like this, but we want to test that a podcast is published or was published if an endpoint was being triggered and that an email was sent. So these are the two things. This is the result that we want to test. All right, so let's create the first one. I'm going to call it, it publishes podcast. And by the way, we're going to use PHP unit for testing our code throughout this whole example. As you can see, I already have here a test template where we have these comments here for arrange, act, and cert. And these are some kind of helpers for me to prepare my tests. In the range part, I'm going to think about in what state my application has to be in before I can trigger something. So for example, we need probably a podcast inside the database that we can trigger to be published. Then the act part is where we're going to publish it. And then we're going to make some assertions like in the database, we now have a different podcast, something like that. And I would always recommend using these comments here. It's not only good while writing new tests, but will also help you later when you come back to a test to understand what's going on. Okay, so what do we need in order to test that a podcast was published? First, of course, we're going to need a podcast. I'm going to use here my podcast factory inside of Laravel which creates a new podcast instance inside the database with some dummy data. And I already know that the default status is not published. This is very important to know. Next, I'm going to trigger here a post request to a specific route. And again, we don't have this route yet, but we're just thinking about how it should work. So I want to use the route help in Laravel, which always uses the name of a specific route. So the name should be podcasts.publish. If you remember correctly, we want to provide an ID for a specific podcast we want to publish with the route. So we could provide the ID or what I can also do is use the model of the podcast itself here. And now under the assert part, we want to make sure that our implementation is working. I want to test that our podcast was published. In level, I can use now the assert database has helper method to test that something is inside the database. The first argument here is the name of the model and this connects it to the right database. So we could also write a string like podcasts, which is the name of the table. And then we're going to provide an array with what we're looking for. We're looking for a podcast where the ID is the ID of our current podcast, the one which we have used here. And then we want to make sure that the status is now published. All right, and that's already a lot because I've written now a whole test without implementing anything. But we already got a quite good picture of what we're going to build here. All right, the only thing left here is running our test and let's see what the output says. Route not found. All right, the route that we have defined or the route which we tried to use podcast publish is not defined. True, because we haven't created it yet. So let's do this. And as you can see, our tests, our failing tests are now telling us what to do. I don't have to think about what to do next because yeah, our tests are telling me already. Again, we are creating now a route for a post request to our specific endpoint. Again, we are expecting a podcast ID and we're going to reference it here to the model. Okay, I've now created the route and I have left the controller which is connected to the route here empty just because I only wanted to make sure that we get a different error message because then the error can tell us again what to do. And as you can see, it does. Expected value exception, invalid route action. Yeah, it's true because this action is not given. All right, so let's create a controller now together. 
And again, we're going to call the controller publish podcast controller. Okay, next we're going to use it, connect our route now to the controller and then run the test again. And now we get the same error as before, route not found exception. Because we haven't given our route a name, so podcast.publish is still not a route. Let's fix this by giving our route a name again. And we're running the test again. And you can see we are now seeing a new error message. Failed asserting that the row in the table podcasts matches the attributes ID and status published. Okay, that's exactly what I hope we were all expecting because, yeah, this podcast is not yet in the database because we haven't done anything inside our controller. So let's get the instance of the podcast again, like this. And the rest is similar as before. We're going to update our podcast and we want the status to be our podcast status published. All right, and let's run the test again. And yeah, it's now the first time that we see something creep because our test, our assertion was passing. How cool is this? Our tests were now leading us here to the solution and now we have a passing test, um, which means that the first thing that we wanted to implement is now working. Perfect, that's a great start and let's move on already. Let's get back to our test here. And now let's create a second test here. And let's call it, it sends out email to the podcast author. And I'm going to copy here some of our first test code because it will be pretty similar. We're going to make sure that we have a podcast and we're also going to trigger the route. And what I also already know what I need here is I'm going to call here in Laravel the mail fake method. And what this does is just switches out the real mail implementation with, with a dummy one. So this just makes sure that we don't really send out an email. And also the cool thing about this is now that we can run some custom assertion on this mail instance. So we can make sure that something was sent. We're going to make an assertion that something was sent. And what was it called again? Podcast published mail. Here we're going to provide the class name. Okay, we want to make sure that we don't send out real emails. We're going to create a new podcast for the database. We're going to make a request to our podcast publish endpoint. And then we're going to make an assertion that an email was sent. All right, looks good. Let's trigger this. The expected podcast published mail was not sent. Okay, that's true. We have a failing test and that's already the point again where we're going to start implementing something. So let me get here to the controller and let's again implement here a mailer. Let's inject it like this and then we're going to send a message to the podcast user. Here we go, podcast user, yes, like this. And we're going to send a new podcast published email. And here we need to create an instance, yeah, like this. Let's run this again. And as you can see, this test now is also passing. Let's get back to our whole test file. I'm going to click here in between and run now both of our tests. And you can see both tests are still passing. All right, so far so good. We have now implemented the same example now by following TDD. And yeah, the good thing is that we now already have two tests in place that make sure that our code is working. Still, having passing tests doesn't always mean that we are finished. Because here in this example, let's check again our controller. We can see that we are always sending out an email here through the mailer. But we have only faked our email service in our second test where we tested the email part. But still in the first test, we are triggering the same code. So this means we would also send out here an email. So this means we also have here to use the mail fake method just to be sure. In the next video, we are going to compare a little bit in detail and in depth what the difference was between those two approaches.